This is an assembly video for the Expo Trainer 2.0. Uh, obviously the first step is get everything out of the box, laid out so you can see what everything is and get the instruction manual. Okay, so I have all the parts laid out and the assembly manual shows the rear wheels going on first. They're very easy to put on, however, we found it's easier to put them on last. So that'll be the way that I demonstrate it in this video. So skipping past that, step one on to step two in the assembly manual. Uh, the first thing to do <coughs> is grab the front assembly in the parts kit. Locate the bolts, nuts, and all the washers that go with this step, and get the tools you need. We'll set that aside. And the handles I'll set to the side because we'll put those in as the very last step. The rear axle tube has the tubes that the handles will slide into. This gusset that extends below the tube goes on the bottom. Gusset on the bottom, tubes in the back, and the serrated edge for putting your foot on the frame goes up. So we take these bolts, put a washer on each one, those go through the kick plate. through the rear axle. So once again, the gusseted portion goes on the bottom, the tubes are on the back, serrated edge is up, and all four of these bolts go through the four bolt holes in the frame. And then each of those gets a washer and a nut. All right, you want to get these uh, very tight. You can do that with the included tools. We've included them so that you can assemble it no matter what you have on hand. However, we really strongly recommend that if you have some tools that you use your own tools for this because it's important that these be tight and that there not be any squeaking or play in the frame. If you're using our tools, just progress like this. If you have your own tools, this is a 13 millimeter metric and a socket wrench and a wrench work great or a socket wrench and an adjustable wrench will work great. These are the tools included with the Expo Trainer. This is a 13 millimeter wrench, an adjustable wrench. This is a socket wrench with a 13 millimeter socket. Any of these will make it much easier to assemble. Same as before. Just tighten each nut. While you're working on this part of the frame, your serial number is located back in this corner. That's the serial number that you will need to reference if you need any warranty work or if you're looking for parts in the future so we know exactly which model you have. Okay, the uh, next step, which is actually step one in the assembly manual, is to install the rear wheels. The reason we changed the order is it's much easier to do when this is already connected to the entire frame so that this isn't moving around on you. Out of your parts kit, at this point there should only be four washers left. Two large washers and two small washers. The large washer goes on first, then a rear wheel with the valve stem facing outwards so that you can access it to add air later. Then a small washer, and then one of the large nuts that's in the kit. Again, you can use our hardware 
provided to tighten that nut or an adjustable wrench makes this job much easier. You just have a lot more leverage on it. Or if you happen to have a metric socket kit, then this is a uh, 15 millimeter socket on the rear wheel. Run that nut all the way down until it's tight. Uh, you don't need to worry about over tightening it because the it cannot tighten too far down onto the wheel. The wheel will always have play left just like that. And that side's done. I'll put the other one on and then we'll come back to the handles. Uh, okay, those two steps actually have assembled the entire frame. There are only a couple things left. The first one is the motor leads are zip tied to the frame here. These need to be connected. They should be connected to start with, but this is what you'll need to get access to if you need to align the front end, and that'll be covered in a separate video. If you're not doing that right now, just tuck them underneath there, kind of squeeze that cable up, and just get them out of the way. Then all that's left is drop on the weight post and the handles just slide into place. On both the weight post and the handles, there are holes drilled. If you want to get pins or bolts and bolt those in place so they are not removable, then you can do that. However, if you're using this in a gym where you don't know who's going to be using it and it's a concern that any of this could come apart on them, then um, just get, just take this to a hardware store and get a quarter inch or six millimeter bolt that fits through it or a pin if you'd rather use a pin and pin them in place. So we get some questions about the handles and about is it a problem that they lift out? And the answer is uh, not in our experience because if you're pushing on them, they will not lift out. Just a little bit of pressure in any direction and the handle's pretty well lock in place. So if I lift straight up, the handle comes right out. If I just squeeze in a little bit, they just stay locked in place. You can lift up the entire expo. When I'm loading it into a truck, I'll normally kick it up, put it on the tailgate, squeeze the rear handles and lift the rest in. So when you're pressing, they won't lift out. Uh, they only lift out if you're lifting straight up. If you received an early production run on the Expo Trainer version 2, then there was a mistake made on the nuts that are on the axle adjusters on the front end. You'll find a bag in your box that has two nuts along with some instructions. So let me demonstrate that real quick. First thing to do is flip the Expo Trainer up on its handles. And right here on the front, these are the axle adjusters that let you move the axle back and forth in order to uh, align it so that, so that it rolls straight. This nut right here is the wrong type of nut. Yours may be that loose coming out of the box. And if you look at this nut, compared to the nuts that will be in the bag, you'll see this nut is a little bit taller and it has a nylon insert. This keeps it from vibrating loose. If you have an early version that has this nut on it, then the first thing you'll need to do before you use it is take this off and replace it with the included nuts that have the nylon insert. And all you have to do is what I, what I just did right there, take the first one off, put the included one on, and with the hardware that we provide, you just wanna run this back down until the axle adjuster is just tight again. Right now there's still some play in it, so I'll just keep running that down tight until it quits moving, and then that's done. That's all that needs to be done. You'll have the same situation on both sides. So we've included two nuts. Once again, if this isn't finger tight, you can use the included tools to remove it. If you want to use your own, it's a 10 millimeter metric. And again, the nylon will stop that nut from going down by finger tightness. And you'll need to use either our tools or your own tools and run this down.
just until that axle adjuster quits wiggling around. And that's it. Now it's ready to use. Uh, one other new thing with the Expo Trainer 2 is we've included a valve extender. This valve on the front wheel is very hard to get to. The rear wheels have extended valves already compared to the first version, but this one is hard to get to. So you want to put this somewhere, hang on to it for future use. And all you need to do to use this is take off the valve stem, or excuse me, take off the valve stem cap, take the valve extender and run it down over the valve stem. Once this is all the way down, now you have much easier access. You can get to this, add your air attachment to put air in the tire. Once you're done with it, just remove it. and put the cap back on to keep any dirt out of there.